Don't talk back there. Shh. Okay, okay, I'll make it quick. Okay. This is day seven. I did not make bread on day five. I just fed my leaven for two days, the same feeding schedule, so that it stayed alive and it is just doing just fine. Like, look at it. It's just so happy and it's so stinky. <laughs> I am going to make some bread tonight. I'm not even going to bake it tonight. It's just starting it. So it's a 12 to 15 hour um, ferment. So that means it's an overnight thing. It's called Overnight Country Blum. This is my auto lease. So auto lease is your first step, which you just mix your flour and your water together and you let it rest so that all of that um, flour absorbs the water. So this is 104 grams of white flour, 26 grams of whole wheat flour, and 50 grams of rye flour. I found the rye flour at Albertsons in that new, or in that area that's like Bob's, I think it's Bob's flour or something, like those, you know, little bags. <clears throat> Next is to Oh, and water, 684 degrees at, I think mine was about 95 degrees Fahrenheit. The next step is to add in 22 grams of fine sea salt. It is from the Geo, which if you don't know, it's called, it's jo grocery outlet. Instead of the big scale, I have a little scale to do small amounts. This little tiny scale that does, it's called, it's, um, does the yeast. I, I just let, I uh, measure out yeast and I measure out salt on this one because it's such small amounts that the big scale doesn't um, even uh, register. 22.05, good enough. Okay, so you sprinkle that on top of your auto lease flour and water mixture. Now we're gonna mix our leaven. So we're gonna put our leaven into our final dough flour salt mixture. We need 216 grams. So it says to do it with water. So you get some water into your um, container. Turn your scale on. You need 216 grams of leaven. Oh, I think getting your hand wet too kind of helps. Ooh. That's 316. 260. That's it. And then you transfer this and you try to get the water out. Try not to have too much water following. And you put it into your final bucket. I went out to URM today and I got myself a 12 quart round bucket, which I'm going to keep as my um, dough kind of a bucket and then I'm gonna keep this as my leaven bucket which is only six quarts and we're gonna fold it into here so um, best is to work with wet hands so keep that water on hand and start so pinch your method which is you take it and you just pinch 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 just pinch chunks of the dough so that you're incorporating the uh, salt and the leaven into your final dough. Keep your hand wet so that you can easily pick it up and turn it. This way we're not getting the counter dirty. We're getting one bucket. This is going to rise in this bucket. It's kind of a nice method because it's not, not a lot of dishes. It's one bucket, one tub. So pinch your method. So it says the target temperature after I've done all this is 77 degrees to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna do this pincher method until I feel like there's no more grainy grains of salt. Six quart bucket, the final dough. I can tell you for one thing, the 12 quart is way easier to work with. This dough has much more space, and my hand has much more space. This was a good idea. Although I would like to stand on a stool to do this, because then I have some more leverage. But I don't have a stool, 
So, sad for me. Two stools. <laughs> in armor's reach. Okay, so, next is the folding method. So this needs two or, th or three, wait, no. Three or four folds. Because overnight leaven dough expands very slowly, so this is not going to expand like your normal doughs. Keep that in mind. It might look like nothing's happening. It's something's happening, don't worry. Okay, this is so exciting. I'm gonna have some delicious bread tomorrow. Oh. So folding is um, you're gonna take the, you're gonna put your hand, scoop your hand underneath. You're gonna take a corner, an edge of the dough, pull it until it's stretched as far as it can stretch, and then uh, fold it over itself. And then you can turn the bucket, pull again, and fold it over itself. Keep doing that when you go around, keeping your hand nice and wet so that you don't stick. And then, this is basically my first fold. So I'm gonna flip it over so all the folds are on the bottom. And then, um, you're gonna know that it needs another fold because it's going to flatten out. And when it starts to um, hold its form, that's when you know when it's, it's done. It says three or four folds. So <clears throat> this was my first. I'm gonna wait 30 seconds, do it again. So that'll be two. And then you can, I can get the third and fourth fold in um, before the first hour is up. You don't wanna ever try and fold it like, you know, the last hour. Cause then, you've, then you'd lose all that beautiful air and pockets that you're trying to um, produce. You just keep on pulling and folding until until you don't until it, it kind of fights you back. And it's like I don't want to do this anymore. It's not being cooperative. Then you stop your fold and you let it rest. Okay, so it's starting to stop. That I'm going to flip it and let it set. So you can rest now. This is what it's supposed to look like after the first two folds. Hi, so we're at day eight of the um, making bread with 11 uh, experience, I guess you can call it. Um, last night I shaped my bread, or I um, folded my, my bread dough um, four times, like it said, at we, so I took the first video around five or six o'clock and I, I folded my dough. And then we came back from the movies three hours later and I decided to do the last two folds before bed. So I did that. And uh, it's really not um, super dough shaped. And it's slower too. Remember, this is 11, so it's not as active as the um, store-bought yeast. So have a look. See how nice and flat it is? It's not very uh, shaped like a bread loaf, but it is, you can see the bubbles. There's a nice big one right there. You can see the bubbles and there is activity going on. So I'm not concerned or anything. It's just gonna look a lot different and less exciting than, um, than store-bought yeast. So I'm not worried. It looks like I should be worried, but I'm not. Now we're gonna shape the loaves. So shaping the loaves means we're going to clean our counter, which I've already done. Um, we're going to sprinkle some flour onto the surface. These are my beautiful little proofing baskets. Um, I found these on Amazon. They are made out of rattan, I think but they're, they're fantastic. And we're just gonna coat these things in flour. So they're a little bit still coated from the last time I used them. We are going to carefully take this dough out of this pan. So we, there's a lot of gluten and elastins happening and we don't wanna rip and tear those. And we also don't wanna crush all the air um, pockets or the carbon dioxide pockets. So I'm gonna take some flour. I'm gonna sprinkle it around the edge of the dough so that we can um, sneak our fingers underneath and kind of ease it out. There we go. 
See, I didn't even use oil. It's not that bad. Okay, so now we're gonna shape our loaves. We're gonna split these in half. This is two loaves. So this is my bread cutting. It's also a pizza knife. I found it at Fred Meyer. Made by Pizza Craft. Anywho, it works really good to cut the bread. Or you could find a bread slicing knife or whatever they call it, pastry knife. So I'm gonna make a line of flour down the middle. This is the wettest part of the dough. So we're gonna take the edges and fold them into the center and we're making a medium tight ball. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna pull it and fold it in. The bottom of the dough is going to be the outside. The bottom of this ball is going to be the outside of my bread. So we're trying to keep in all these, we're not trying to crush all the bubbles and stuff. Okay, so then you flip it over, brush away the dust, the flour, because we're going to want some friction for the next part. So we're going to scoop underneath the dough ball and we're going to pull towards us, turn and you use the friction of the counter to create tension. So you just keep doing this until you get this medium tight dough ball. And sometimes you need to put some flour on your hands. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna take my flour. The bottom, all the seams down, and it's just gonna sit there. So it has to rise now? Yes, this is now called the proofing stage. Grab a um, kitchen towel that's not terry cloth. Uh, and I, I found these big ones. I think I found them in my grocery outlet or Fred Meyer. And you cover them and you put them on your counter and you let them rise for about four hours. The temperature should be about 70 degrees in the room. Our next step will be proofing uh, for four hours and then letting it bake. So I'll have some nice fresh bread for dinner. All right, see you at the next step. Hey, so time to bake. It is now almost six o'clock. It's 5.23. So I said 4.45 is what my estimation was. Um, but uh, it rose a little bit slower. Um, I'm doing the finger dent test, which is that you take your, um, your finger and you take your bread dough like this and push it. And the finger dent is if it springs back really fast, it's not yet done. If it, if your finger dents in and it leaves, it, it only springs back halfway, it's done. If your finger goes in and it doesn't recover at all, you've overproofed it. Still try to bake it, it might work, but um, this one is done because there's still that little dent after I pressed it. Right, uh, let's see, it's this right there. Now it's time to put it in the Dutch ovens. So, baking in a Dutch oven is what we're gonna do. You preheat your oven to 475. You put in your Dutch oven. A Dutch oven is a pot that has a lid that is oven proof, basically. I have two different types. I have one that's coated and it's white and it's a pretty Pot, you know, like a um, La Crusette or something like that. Crusade or whatever. <laughs> also, I have a nice um, Lodge brand uh, Dutch oven with a lid. And it's just, um, you know, cast iron. 
So we're gonna use them both. So, uh, these guys are done. I put both of the Dutch ovens into the oven. They are, they are preheated. So we're going to carefully drop these into the Dutch ovens without touching the sides and without ruining the shape of our loaves. <laughs> it's a tricky business, but uh, don't forget to wear gloves and the lid is hot <laughs> all the time. Oh, and then after that, after I put them in the oven, I'm gonna show you what to do. I would like to not have to feed my leaven anymore. I'm done with feeding it every day. So I'm gonna take some of it and put it into a container and put it into the refrigerator and I'll show you how to do that the correct way so that it stays alive and you can, um, you can re, hydrate it or you can reconstitute it or warm it back up or um, wake it back up later when you want to cook more leavened bread. But this is going to make two loaves and this is going to be a lot. You know, I might just take this to a friend's house. Anyway, let's get to it. This is what I do. Clean this counter right next to the stove. Have your oven gloves ready. Have your hands washed. Extra flour just in case. First, you get your Dutch oven out. Here is my pretty, not so white oven. You're gonna take some flour, and if you put enough flour on this, it should just come out real nice. So, What you're trying to preserve this is a nice shape and you don't want it to tear. All right, so it kind of pulled on one side. So now I'm gonna scoop it up real careful like. Carefully drop it in there. Okay, that's gonna bake out real gorgeous. And you don't score the tops of these because they'll, they'll just crack on their own. Dutch oven number two, and it is probably a little smaller in diameter. So let's try. And instead of just, I could just drop it in, I guess, but I don't want to be accidentally touching my hot pot. This one's really stuck. I guess I should have put some more flour on there. These proofing baskets come with like little um, cases or like fabric covers but I like the little shape. I like the pattern that the, the circular um, structure makes. So I took them out. Okay, so that one got all sad and wrinkly. Oh goodness, this is a really droopy bread. So let's see how much this rises. Okay, look at that giant line. That's gonna be an interesting um, final shape. Those just fit in my oven. Now, with the lid on, we'll put the timer on for 30 minutes. So let's let's put this leaven to bed because I don't want to deal with it anymore. Ooh, it's so ripe. It smells lovely. So I'm going to save 300 grams, and I've chosen this half gallon jug, mostly because it was clean and it was sitting on my counter. And I don't have plastic bags. It says to put them in plastic bags, but I've decided to ch switch from plastic to, you know, silicone reusable bags, so I don't have any uh, on me. Oh, 300, 303, done. So all this can just get thrown out and rinsed off and cleaned up. Next is take your leaven that you're going to keep and it says you should put some a film of water a little film of water and um, put the lid on and store it in your refrigerator for up to one month okay so you need two days before you plan to bake with the refrigerated leaven so 
uh, remove it from the fridge and put 200 grams of it into the empty leaven bucket, so a nice clean one, and then discard the remainder. So we've only, yeah, so we've only, we've got 300 in here. You're gonna only keep 200 of it to start a new one. Give it time to warm up, about 30 to 60 minutes. Add 100 grams of whole wheat flour, 400 grams of white flour, and 400 grams of 95 degree temperature water and mix by hand and let it rest in a warm spot overnight. Then in the morning, the next morning that you plan to bake, feed the leaven again. This was an overnight. Okay, so yesterday I fed my leaven in the morning and I let it sit and eat. And, um, and then seven hours after that, I did the auto lease um, with the flours that I want for my bread, and then I added the leaven to that, and today I'm baking it. So yeah, this is, this is a time intensive kind of a process, but uh, it's worth it. If you don't want any additives in your bread, you know exactly what's in this. It's just flour, salt, and water, and wild yeast. What can get better than that? I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it's informative and I hope it works out and you know, um, text me or comment if you need questions answered and stuff like that. I totally give credit to Ken Forkish and his awesome book that has taught me all these things. This is what my bread's gonna look like. There you go. He bakes some really uh, dark, um, I will update after a half an hour. I'll come back on and I'll, I'll show you what's going on. All right, 30 minutes has just beeped. And now it's time to take off the lids and uh, let them brown up. So let's have a look at them. Ooh. Okay, I better get this going because I'm letting all the heat out. And it's a hot day today. Now bake uncovered for 20 to 25 minutes. You want it to be like shy of burning until medium dark brown to very dark brown all around the loaf. So we're gonna check after after 15 minute mark to make sure that we're not burning it in case my oven runs hot, which I don't think it does, but uh, it's always good to check after 15 minutes. So I'm gonna put 15 minutes on the timer and check it and show you. All right, time to check the check the bread. It's been 15 minutes. It smells lovely. I want it to go a lot darker. It's right now, it's a golden. It, it would probably be what you think it should be. But like he said, um, go a little longer and it'll pay off. So another 15 minutes until we check it again. All right, the 15, another 15 minutes has gone by and we're gonna have a look-see at the color of this uh, beautiful bread. It's billowing. Oh man. Yeah, I think I like the color of these. I'm not gonna push it any farther. I like to use these guys because they're very uh, helpful. So we just slip that underneath. Ooh, baby. Look at that. Nice and dark, steaming. And the cool thing is, these are gonna go crackle, crackle when they, when they start to cool off. Look at how pretty that is. There's that weird bumpy thing that happened. It's like a ridge. And then I have this pretty crack on this other loaf. Here's my nice crack, artisan crack. They're not as high as um, if you were to do um, a store-bought yeast. They're not as high. But they're still gonna have some beautiful bubble air pockets in them because we didn't crush all the air pockets, so. So it says to wait about 15 minutes before we um, cut these open or anything, so. Nine days, nine days for a, uh, nine days for leaven bread. Um, my house smells amazing. And it was really fun to go through this process and, uh, and uh, capture yeast and make bread out of it as a final product, so. Tasty science. All right, moment of truth, cutting into a loaf. I think I'm going to cut into the weird bumpy loaf. You can knock on it. Crust. 
Oh. Mmm. Now it doesn't smell as sour, but see there's some good air pockets in there. That's pretty. Yeah, this is a pretty tough crust, so I guess if you don't want it to be as crusty. Do not cook it too long. Okay, so the first thing I noticed is that this isn't as, it's very moist. It's not as, um, I don't know, dry as I'd hope. I think the, uh, I think there's some screaming and carnage going on in the backyard. So I love the size of the holes. These are great. Um, it is a little bit still doughy. I don't think it's completely, I don't think it's completely done, but my outside baked a lot faster than my inside, which is like the first time this has happened, so. Um, hmm. Mm. I follow the recipe. I listen to him. I try to make it cook it like that darkness like he's been telling me to do. I always do golden brown. I feel like I could have left the, the lids on for a little bit longer. I'm gonna eat my beautiful bread with my pork roast and be happy. <laughs>